In this demonstration, I'll be creating a sheet metal component typical to the automotive industry. This part shall be designed in context to provide mounting for a piece of equipment and relate it to surrounding geometry that provides mounting fixture points. The Part Properties tab in Sheet Metal Preferences now provides a broader set of options to ensure the flat pattern provides the right output for manufacture. With parameter entry, a number of bend definition methods have been added with definition of flat pattern allowances by a neutral factor constant, customizable formula for bend allowance and bend deduction, together with the standard DIN 6935 method. In addition to the neutral factor bend table, we now have separate tables for bend allowance and bend deduction. When configured, the material selection method now has the ability to drive a number of configurable tables. Each parameter in the material table can be a constant value or read from a lookup table or formula. This example is using lookup tables that define the bend radius and neutral factors based on the material thickness and bend angle. A punch and die are selected as default setting for the part. We'll start by creating a tab using a predefined sketch and then add a flange using the match face method with an offset. Now we'll add a mounting hole for the fixing. This fixing needs to be recessed, so we'll add a dimple feature to complete this fixture point. Now that's complete, we'll move to the other fixture point and create another base tab, this time using the region boundary curve selection filter, showing the creation of the tab with multiple loops. Next, we'll use the same selection method to create the main tab, and you can see multiple regions are picked up from different sketches to create the final desired profile. To join the separate bodies together, we'll use the bridge bend command. Using the fold transition type with a full start edge, you can see bend parameters can be defined by length or bend radius. A number of material conditions can be selected depending on the desired end result. Let's do the same at the other end where we can see the bridge bend will operate on disconnected and intersecting bodies. Since the consolidation of aerospace sheet metal into the advanced application, we now have access to previously aerospace specific commands, such as lightning cutout, used here to provide a cable access aperture. Now our part needs some strengthening features, starting with a simple bead, and now an advanced flange around the outer edge noting we can use path selection to control the limits of the feature. Next, we'll add some strengthening to the bends near the fixing attachment points, flattening the part using unbend where needed and create bead features. Note that these can be created either in the flat or in the formed state, depending on the requirement. Note when created in the form state, the feature washes out through the bend. Now to add some fixing holes for mounting the equipment. And finally, add some break corner features to remove the sharp edges. Note that this can be done easily with rectangle select rather than single selecting small edges. Now to create the flat pattern using the new orientation by CSIS method to ensure the flat pattern rotation is appropriate.
Once created, we can view the flat pattern alongside the part in a separate window. The bend sequence IDs can now be adjusted to suit the bend order needed for manufacture. On completion of the flat pattern, we now have some basic attribute data that tells us the interior and exterior cut lengths, along with the minimum blank size for some basic cost estimation. The part blank is intended to be laser cut and small holes are not appropriate for this method, so we can replace holes of a certain size with centre marks. Here we are using an expression to replace all holes equal to or smaller than the material thickness with centre marks. Now the part is complete, we can analyse the design using the out of box visual reports to display sheet metal parameter information. Let's take a look at the Ben Radius report. And finally the face type report that shows us the feature types to further assist in understanding the part geometry. Now let's look at a typical aero part. We have the basic reference elements here for designing this bulkhead part in context. Once again we'll set up the part properties to define the correct material for the job. In this case we are using constant values for the bend radius and neutral factor. First we'll create the main body of the part using region boundary curve selection intent. Now we'll create an advanced flange to the fuselage. Using the two reference option we can not only pick up on the surface but also infer the length for an exact profile match. Next, we'll create a by value flange on the inside to complete the profile. We need to create a joggle now to step around the frame component. Using the joggle command, we define the location limit by offsetting a plane and then adjusting the depth. As the part is driven from the material table, we can use predefined settings to drive the runout and radius values for the feature. In this case, we see the runout for a 3mm depth joggle is 30. Let's repeat for the central support part and define this as a twin joggle. Again, the transition parameters are driven from the material table and we can see the values update as the depth is adjusted. In this case, we'll apply a clearance value. Next, we'll add some lightning cutouts for weight reduction and access points. Predefined properties are read from the material table the map to the standard tooling sizes, enabling the appropriate size to be selected. Should the feature be too close to surrounding geometry, the clearance check guides the designer accordingly. Now to add some more cutouts with a simple pattern. Finally, we'll create the flat pattern. In this case, we have displayed the inner and outer mould lines, or heel lines, 
typical for this type of part, rather than the usual bend centre and tangent lines. For this demonstration, I have made the flat solid external so we can easily see that compensation has been applied to the flanges and joggle features to allow for the material deformation. NX uses a standard algorithm to compute this. However, if your standard process differs, an adjustment of plus or minus five degrees is possible on a per end basis as shown here. For juggle compensation, threshold limits can be applied to control when the compensation is ignored. 